In this chapter we're going to look at sudo code, which if you like is the doorway into you starting to make your own computer programs. Now an algorithm, as fancy as the word sounds, is actually quite straightforward. It's basically a set of instructions used to solve a particular problem. Now you'll have come across what we'd call algorithms in real life. For example, if you've ever followed a set of instructions to make some Lego, or if you ever like built a table or a chest of drawers, anything like that, or followed a recipe for making a, a, a meal or a dessert, they are all classed as algorithms because you're following instructions to solve a particular problem. Now in computer science, these algorithms would be a computer program. These can be really difficult and time consuming to write. So careful planning is required before you even start to write any code at all and test it. You need to create something called pseudo code. Now the word pseudo, a lot of people say that it means fake. Pseudo means to have the appearance of doing something without actually doing it properly. So pseudo code follows a very similar structure to the final code that you're going to create. But you don't have to worry about all the finer details like the actual syntax, the actual wording and uh, punctuation that you're going to use. Now pseudo code is quicker and easier to write than normal code. And you're going to have to do things like this in your exam. So I'd say now is a pretty good time to start learning it. You'll find the different ways of doing it and different solutions to the same problem. Like you might find two different methods for doing the same thing. The table at the bottom shows a few of the common words used in pseudocode and what they can be used for. So when you see VAR, it's usually for creating a variable. A variable is when you create an area of memory for a value that can change during that program. Input is quite often used for when you need to get some sort of input from the user, which a lot of programmers are going to need. This could be something that you've got to type in or something that you've got to click. An output or print is often used when something's going to be output to the screen or when something's going to actually happen. Right, so just in case your mind is completely and utterly blown, it'll probably get a lot easier now when you start looking at some of these examples. So, first example, if you want to add 20% VAT to a product that someone's buying in a shop, now obviously 20% VAT is standard in this country, so this is happening every time you buy something. So the basic solution in human words in our own language is that you take the product price and multiply it by 0 0.2. That will find you out what 20% is. And then you would either display or output the answer. Pseudo code is a much clearer and easier way of writing this program in any coding language. So once you've got the pseudo code right, you could then use that to code in any particular language, whether it's Java, C, uh, Visual Basic, Python, whatever you want to use. So here's the pseudo code for the example that we've just discussed. Uh, I've numbered all of the different lines just so it's easier to explain what's happening in each one. VAR price. So we've created a variable called price. Second line, we've created a variable called VAT. Now I've created these two variables so that we've got an area in memory that we can store values in that might change as the program's uh, getting carried out. So on line three, price equals input, and then in brackets with speech marks, please enter price. So I've basically said that I wanna create a string of text, please enter price, that's gonna be displayed on the screen, and whatever you type in is gonna be assigned as an input. And you're gonna set that input to the price. So you basically, price equals whatever you type in. Now line 4, VAT is equal to price multiplied by 0 0.2. So whatever the value you've typed in is going to get multiplied by 0 0.2 and that will be assigned to the variable called VAT. Line 5, print VAT. So you could either have output VAT or print VAT. It's going to display that answer to the user. Okay, so hopefully things are probably starting to get a little bit clearer for you now. If we look at a second example, hopefully it clarifies things a little bit more. So the program asks the user to enter their age. The system must output the approximate number of days they have been alive and the approximate hours they have been alive. Now when we've 
done the first lesson on computational thinking you've got your decomposition and your abstraction this if you do it properly you can break down this problem and come up with a particular solution for it so what do we actually need to do at the bottom of the slide you can see useful information 365 days in a year 24 hours in a day so using those bits of key information we can decide what we actually need to include in our program so the first thing is the program is going to ask the user for something so we need an input of some sort also we want to do two different calculations and two different outputs so the first calculation is going to be whatever the user inputs we want to multiply that by 365 because that's how many days there are in a year second is we want to multiply the number of days by the number of hours in a day so we're going to times whatever the new value of the number of days they've been alive for we're going to multiply that by 24 hours okay when we've got these two values we can output them to the system okay so let's take a look at the pseudo code for this particular problem then so in certain languages like python you don't necessarily need to declare your variables separately but i've got in the habit of doing this from using different programming languages so the first three lines i'm basically just declaring three variables that i want to use in the program so i've allocated an area of memory that i am going to store the values of these variables in so one for age so that's going to be what the user is going to input one for the number of days lived so that's going to be part of my calculation and one for the number of hours lived okay when we get to line four this is going to be the input very similar to what we did before so we're saying for the variable called age we want that to be an input and the user is going to see on the screen enter your age and they'll type it in okay so once they've input the age we're going to multiply that by 365 and allocate that to the variable called days lived okay now that we've got this value called days left which is going to be the input multiplied by 365 we can then times that by 24 and allocate that to the variable called hours left okay so now we've got three different things we've got age days left and hours left all in memory all of these values are stored so all we've got to do then is print them to the screen so we're going to output a string of text your age in days equals and then put the new value that, from the calculation and then we're going to output your age in hours and the value of hours left hopefully that example is now a bit more clear and a bit more straightforward for you i think now is a good time to introduce you to something called selection so sometimes the programs that do different things depending on what the input is so in the last two programs we've taken an input from the user and carried out a certain calculation in this particular case what we're going to do is output two different things based on whatever the input is so that's basically a selection it's selecting your answer sorry a different output based on whatever your input is so let's take a look at an example program with selection inside so the program is going to ask the user to enter two different numbers it's going to output the largest of these two numbers so we need a logical decision here which one's bigger if one number is bigger then i'll put this if another number is bigger i'll put this so i'll take a little bit of time to discuss the worked example for this one here's the pseudo code for the problem that we've just been discussing so first of all i've got rid of the declaration of the variables at the start gone more for like a sort of python style approach where we can just kind of declare the variables as we go through the program so number one is the first input that we're going to take from the user second line number two is another input that we're going to take from the user so these two lines have allocated an area in memory that we can store some values in then what's going to start is what we call an if else statement this is the selection so this is literally the decision that's going on inside the program so if number one is bigger than number two then we're going to output to the screen number one is bigger so whichever number that you've input is going to say it's bigger on the screen 
Second part of the condition is number two. If number two is bigger, then output number two is bigger. And finally, the only other thing that you could do is put the two numbers exactly the same. So that's going to be the else. So if the two numbers are the same, it's going to say the numbers are the same. Then the last line there, end if, we need that to basically say that's the end of the if statement. It's not looking for any more conditions in there. Now this type of programming is the basis for so many different programs. Even something like as straightforward as playing a game. If this button is pressed, then do this. Otherwise, do this.